Shalom. Parshat Bechukotai is the last Torah portion of the book of Vayikra, Leviticus. And in retrospect, when we look back at our shared experience the past few months, reading the Torah portion, studying them, book of Leviticus, we realize that this book really presents God's program for being in the world, for his relationship with man, for man activating the Shekhinah mode of God's presence in this world. That's what Sefer Vayikra is all about. It's about the program. God presents it to us. Its major manifestation is the service of the Holy Temple, but underlying the concept of the Temple service is the massive concept of our recognizing His presence in this world and our elevating everything for that service as part of that recognition. And so the program is our life. That's the program which is showcased by the centerpiece of the Torah, the heart of the Torah, the book of Leviticus. And the program is all-encompassing. It's everything. It's every moment of our lives. And the program is ennobling for man and grand. And at the same time, it's humbling and quite sobering. Because it conveys awesome responsibility and ultimately, and this is consistently the bottom line of everything in Torah, ultimately everyone has a choice. And therefore, some may choose not to go with the program, and some may choose not to hear it and really will not want to know, will not want the information. Now, do you remember how the book of Leviticus began? We emphasized that the book of Leviticus began with a still small voice, symbolized by that small letter Aleph, and the verse, first verse in Leviticus reads, He called to Moses, and Hashem spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, and we pointed out how unusual the sentence structure is, how it's broken up, how the speaker in the beginning of the verse is not identified, how it's separated, and he called to Moses, and God spoke to him from the tent of meeting. And at that time, studying the first parasha in Vayikra, we emphasized how our sages point out that that voice went out from the tent of meeting straight to the ear of Moshe, and how evidently no one else could hear it, and how that really, as a metaphor for what Leviticus is all about, really conveys the idea that these things need deep contemplation and the ability to accept what it is that Hashem is saying. Because we're dealing here with things that challenge people's comfort zones, that shake up our vision of reality, that convey to us the, again, very sobering fact that Hashem is here, that things are not haphazard, that there is a program, and that we are part of that. And evidently, Again, that small voice that went straight to Moshe's ear, not everyone could hear it, but we also know at the same time that little children could also hear it because we have a tradition, our sages tell us, that little children begin their career of Torah study with Vayikra. And we understand that on one level that's because they have not yet accumulated all sorts of preconceived notions regarding one of the major subjects of Vayikra, which is the Korban notes. They haven't yet learned that these things are hard to understand. They haven't yet learned that we should be raising our eyebrows about God's instructions to us with the offerings. But it's not only that. The idea of children beginning their career with the study of Vayikra and the obvious implication that children can hear that voice like Moses, it's not only, important as this idea is, it's not only about the fact that they 
are equipped better to handle the knowledge of the Korban note better. Because the core ideal, again, of Leviticus is not just about the temple experience and service, but what's behind it, which is following Hashem's word without excuses and without pretenses, just for the sake of Hashem's name and fulfilling His commandments. Now, Hashem's speech brought forth all of creation. Our sages tell us, with ten utterances, the Holy One, blessed be He, brought all of existence into being. And likewise, part of our daily prayers is, blessed be He who spoke, and the world was. The world was brought into creation. And since that moment, creation is flowing towards a certain fulfillment. And one thing that this parasha really hammers home is that either we are part of this program that began with God's speech or we're not. And there are two key factors, I believe, in our parasha. And it's very fitting, since Leviticus began with that voice, that now, at the conclusion of the book, after the program has been presented to us, the program has been laid out, and now it is summarized, and we're told that the results that we receive, that we, that we are are, are given will ensue from our own attitude. So in our parsha, there seem to be two major factors. And the first factor is, will you please get with the program? Getting with the program implies movement. Growth, the only real evidence of life, if you will follow my decrees and observe my commandments and perform them. This is a huge idea. In Bechukotai Telechu, this implies movement, and not only in the observance of the commandments, but if you will follow my ordinances, if you will live with them, if you will be going with them, if you will be moving with my, the spirit of my ordinances and seeing me in everything and living for me, that's one major idea that is being conveyed and the other is when the admonition begins when the admonition begins we are told if you will but if you will not listen to me and will not perform all of these commandments there are two separate things here. There is listening to me and performing the commandments. So the verse says, if you will not listen to me and will not perform my commandments, if we compare this to, for example, Deuteronomy 11.13, very important Torah portion about uh, accepting the yoke of responsibility of the commandments. There will, we read in Deuteronomy 11.13, it's the second portion of the daily Shema. And it's called the portion that relates to accepting the yoke of the commandments. But there we read, and it shall come to pass that if you listen to my commandments that I command you this day, to love Hashem your God and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I shall provide rain for your land, etc. And there, in the all-important second portion of the daily Shema, there is no distinction between the, Hashem is not making any distinction between my voice and the commandments. There we're just told it shall come to pass if you will listen to my commandments. But here, in the portion of the admonition, we are told, but if you will not listen to me and will not perform my commandments. And how interesting that in the other Torah portion, referred to as admonitions, namely Deuteronomy 28, there too, we read, and it shall come to pass that if you listen to the voice of Hashem your God 
to observe, to perform all of his commandments that I command you this day, then Hashem your God will make you supreme over all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you listen to the voice of Hashem your God. So we see a distinction that the voice is not only about observing the commandments. The voice is indicative of our cognizance of the presence of Hashem in our lives. It is the desire to receive that presence and keep ourselves open to Him in our lives. And if we don't, then, like the possible outcome in this week's Torah portion, if we don't keep ourselves open to His presence in our lives, but rather we see everything as casual, as casual cause and effect, because we're not hearing the voice, then, God forbid, God reciprocates with a type of casualness as, as well, as is outlined so well in this Torah portion. And one has to distinguish between hearing that voice, which is really the voice of Hashem, the voice of eternal truth, the voice that shows His hand upon us, on all reality, and one's own voice. There's a difference between that voice and one's own voice, which can be misconstrued as that voice. And the classic example of that is in Sefer Vayikra. Nadav and Avihu sought very much to honor Hashem. They sought to serve Him. And they certainly must have heard some sort of calling. But the voice that they heard was, the, was their own, was of their own making. So on these words, in our Torah portion, on the words, and if you will not listen to me, and will not perform all of these commandments, on these words our sages tell us that there is a voice, a bat kol, a heavenly voice that goes out every day, that is announced, a declaration is made every day from Mount Sinai, Woe to the degradation of the Torah, that God bemoans the fact, as it were, that He gave the Torah and that it is not receiving its proper attention. And these words apply to that voice that we have the ability and the choice to listen to, if you will not listen to me and will not perform all of my commandments. That voice is the voice that goes out, and as our sages tell us, well, if that voice is daily an announcement, a divine proclamation, a heavenly voice that goes out from Mount Sinai, but we cannot hear it on an audible, recognizable level, then why does God bother to make that declaration every day? And the answer that it does have some sort of effect, an inner effect on our souls. It does resonate. It does go in to some extent, and it gives us the opportunity for personal growth. It gives us the opportunity to follow. It gives us the opportunity to move with the program, and it can beget within us the desire to move closer to Hashem. And <clears throat> that voice resonates within each one of us every day, calling us back to Hashem, which is the goal of the program, the goal of the book of Leviticus. And the choice this Torah portion of B'chukotai really emphasizes is ours, to hear the voice or, God forbid, not to hear the voice.